Hey everybody, so listen to me carefully. Do you fall if others fall? Does the failings of someone else cause you to question your entire faith in God? Hmm, then maybe you needed to have that exposed more than maybe the other person's sin exposed. You needed to find out that you were standing upon really how others are behaving and how others are walking with Jesus rather than you knowing him deeply and personally so that whether there are those that fall to your left or to your right, your faith in him, the unshakable kingdom within you uh, does, not, does not fall. So good morning. I am so glad to be with you today. If this is your first time live with me, I'm Nancy McCrady, and this is Move on Mondays because whatever you shouted about and said amen about on Sunday, we need to get up and be ready to move forward with God on Monday. We don't need to dread Mondays. We need to embrace Monday and say this is the day that we really begin to live out, all right, live out maybe what we shouted about at church yesterday. And we need to know that every day, what does Monday represent? It represents the everyday grind of life, doesn't it? The everyday ordinary drudgery of life. And I don't mean that life is horrible. I mean, it's just that here we go. We come off the mountaintop and we descend down into the valley of real life and we live it out. If the mountaintop means anything, my friends, it means a fresh revelation of who Jesus is. But then Jesus says, we're going down into the valley of real life. That's why you need to see him, hear him, and know him in those mountaintops is so that you can descend. If you're a person who thinks that everything should uh, be a transfiguration moment and you think everything should be mountaintop, then descending can become like a death trap to you. It can be so difficult, so depressing. But if you realize that what Jesus took you to the mountain for was to reveal himself to you so that that would burn brighter in you than any other person's failings, any other set of circumstances, anything else that comes along, that you would be, as Paul said, you would be obedient to the heavenly vision that you saw something of him that cannot be shaken by what you are seeing in the natural today. Paul ultimately said, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. You see, Paul had seen someone. He had seen someone and heard someone that no matter what he saw in himself or others or what was going on in the world, that could not be shaken. It didn't make him deny the reality of what he was living in but nothing could shake him. You see, there is a greater reality, my friends, than the circumstances that you're in or what you're going through. And do not let those things define who God is and who his church is about to be. So I wanna share with you today a little bit, you know, last week I talked about the necessary um, role that redemptive exposure plays in the work of God. And my friends, we're not done yet. We've barely started. There is about to be redemptive exposure. Exposure in your own life, exposure within the church. Weeks ago, months ago, actually, God said to me, good morning, everybody. So glad to see you. I hope you'll share this while it's live and in the repost. It's great to be together today. But because of the things that God has had to deal with me in my own life over the years, um, where I lived a dual life, I had uh, a great ability to be able to work the room and to be able to live publicly. And I was sincere, I was real, but I also had a private life that was going on that God had to deal with me very, very deeply by the cross of Jesus Christ. And let me say this, the cross is the only thing that can be thrown into the belly of hell and bring somebody out. My friends, listen to me carefully. The redemptive exposure that God is about to be required to use, because the reason it's required is because we resist him in private. We resist others when they come to speak to us. You know, 
God's word is his own way of life. So Matthew 18 isn't just a way for humans, all right, for humans to deal with each other. This is the way that God deals with all of us. God comes to us personally. If that doesn't work, then God will send someone to us to speak to us, to say, hey, you know, what you're saying and what you're doing doesn't line up. Hey, are you lying? Let me just see if I can get up close here. Are you lying? I, what you said over here is not what you said here. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Okay, to pierce the bag that's over our head, to pierce the denials that we are in, brought on by deep self, deep narcissism, deep patterns of our whole entire life, all right? And when God cannot get our attention, let me tell you, he loves you, and he's going to prove it, okay? Let me tell you, if you are deeply loved by God, okay, you're, you're going you're gonna to know this. And this is what's going to fit us for every good work. This is what's going to fit us for the days ahead when multiplied hundreds, I don't, I don't want to get over-exaggerating here, but hundreds and hundreds are going to begin to feel the exposing light. And we've got to be ready. Those of us who have had to be dealt with ahead of time, who have had to see our own propensity for self and sin, okay, for lying, deceiving, whatever the case may be, okay, do you understand he's getting the vanguard ready? The vanguard are those elite ones, the stupid ones that were stupid before everybody else, who were dealt with before everybody else. Do not think that your elitism, my friends, being in the vanguard of those that are going to be ready to help the hundreds and hundreds of sons that God is about to have to deal with because he loves them. Do not think that your elitism is because somehow you're specially anointed. No, you were specially, all right, and the Bible said you, know, you were especially wicked in your goodness. Because most of what I'm addressing are those who realize that all their goodness was really filth to God. God says our self-righteousness is as filthy rags to him. The filth that God is coming after, my friends, is the goodness within the church. She has a goodness that is separate and independent from Jesus Christ. And oh my, we need his goodness. We need his goodness as our only hope of goodness. We need his goodness to lead us to repentance. So this vanguard has got to be dealt with ahead of time. These that have been dealt with over the years and have been kept hidden, who have been saturated in his ways, who are now delivered from selfish ambition. Those who have a heart for the Father because the Father has done something. My friends, if you have a heart for God, you did not accomplish that. God had to give you give you his heart, a new heart and a new spirit he put within you. Our only uh, boasting, my friends, is going to be, oh my, how good he is. That he takes his former enemies. Hmm? He takes his prodigal sons. Remember, the prodigal was a son. He takes the elder brother that stayed at home and labored in, in his goodness. He takes them all and he deals with them appropriately and forms and fashions out of those a vanguard of sons who will be ready in houses of abiding fire all over the world. This is part of my assignment. Okay, this part of the message. That we are going to not be shocked. Mm -mm. We're not shocked at somebody else's sin. We are not stumbling and faltering because we thought others were so good. Oh, no, we did not. Because once God has revealed your condition to you, then you'll be forever cured of worshiping other people and thinking they're so awesome. All right? Now listen to me carefully. This creature worship stuff has got to come down. Because if other people fall and you find out about their sin and that they're not as good as what you thought, and you're shocked, your whole faith begins to crumble, all of that, my friends, it needed to crumble. Because your faith was in people that you thought were good rather than... Your faith is in the person of the Godhead, the three persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, all right? I have had people who have literally saved my life, but they led me to the Father. They led me to Jesus. They led me to Holy Spirit. And let me just tell you, in subsequent years when they fell, I did not fall because my faith was not built on them. 
my faith was built upon the God that they led me to. And then I tried to turn around and return the favor to them. You see, I want to return the favor to the entire body of Christ because she saved me, because she was filled. I have met people right there in your own local church. You may be experiencing it yourself personally. Maybe you're the one living the dual life. Maybe you're the one. All right, so let me tell you, whatever sphere, stratosphere, level, whatever you're at, wherever you are, let me tell you, God is coming for his sons. He is about to birth and build a company of jealous sons. It's called the corporate son, the church of Jesus Christ, the church of the firstborn, Hebrews 12, 23. And let me tell you, God knows how to raise his sons. He knows how to deal with us, discipline us. He knows how to uh, pat you uh, like that. If, all, if that's all it takes to straighten you out, oh, praise God. I was one who needed to be scourged. I required it of God to have to scourge me, and I gladly say today that because of the redemptive scourging of my Father, I promise you this, anything you know of me today, anything that you've ever tasted, any fruit that has ever come from me that has impacted your life is because my Father scourged me and dealt with me exactly the way that I needed to be. This is why I'm not confused about his love for me. I'm not confused about his ways, and I'm not confused about what is about to happen. Now, I may not know all the specifics, but I'm telling you, we are in a day of redemptive exposure. The fire of God is coming. The fire of intimacy is coming. The fire that is going to blaze in his house is born of him, the jealous God, who is an all-consuming fire. If you've ever been confused about whether or not God loved you or not, well, that's about to pass. You're not going to be confused unless you continue on in a way, all right, that takes you further and further from his redemptive work. I pray that you are going to be one who completely takes hold of this. You see, because... As you're going to watch other people fall, whatever we think that means, what that actually means is, is that God says, I am going to expose things as they actually are. Because, my friends, we got to break the voodoo off of us, the church. I'm not worried about the world right now. My focus is that God comes for the household of faith first. Oh, how he loves us. And he is coming. And months ago, these words were in me, and I seldom say them because I know to most people they will sound so harsh to me. They are so redemptive. But the house is filled. There is filth and carnage. There is filth. The goodness of man has gotten up in the church. And we're overly impressed with our giftings and overly impressed with our structures. And I'm telling you, God's, it, it's over. And this is not a finger of judgment pointed. I'm telling you, he had to do this in me 25 years ago. And I am living in perpetual repentance of it. And I have to shake it off all the time. We must understand that God is going to have people ready, ready to help you and ready to help all of those. I don't care how big they are when they fall. I don't care how inconspicuous and insignificant they may seem. God is getting ready. By the cross of Jesus Christ, the fire that comes from the cross of Jesus is about to come for his church. He is coming for his church. That's you, my friend. Don't be pointing at just leaders or anything. That's you and me. And what you allow him to do in you as his church, as his leaders, as his mouthpieces. Do you understand? Good morning, everybody. Please share this while it's live and in the repost. Listen to me carefully. The day of redemptive exposure, it is here. It has been happening in small measures as we've gone along, but I'm telling you, the voodoo on the church is about to break by the power of the cross, and it is going to be like coming out of anesthesia that you've been under for a long time, and you start thinking, what have I been thinking? What have I been doing? These are words that resound in heaven when the people of God begin to awaken Awaken, which means the voodoo is breaking, according to Galatians 3, 1 through 5. Read it in the Amplified Classic, and if you really want a good shot today, read it in the Message Bible. He says, what's wrong with you crazy, foolish, senseless, silly Galatians that you think you started in the Spirit, but you're going to finish and come to perfection by your own efforts, your own flesh? 
Didn't you see him crucified? Who has put this spell on you? Who has vexed you? Who has fascinated and bewitched you? And because I'm from Louisiana, I say, who has put this voodoo on you? He's talking to the church. And I want to say to you that we are about to awaken out of a, a bewitching slumber that we have been under. And when you awaken, my friends, some of you might be nauseated. Have you ever had surgery and come out of anesthesia and been nauseated and thrashed about? It could happen. But my friends, there are those of us who God got ready beforehand, and we understand. But we will not. We will not water down His work. We cannot water down the work of God when people are awakened and pierced into a grief that only God could give you. Ooh, read 2 Corinthians 7, 9, and 10 in the Amplified Classic. Those of us who have been delivered to get ready to be there for you, we cannot, we cannot dull the sharpening that he brings by saying, oh, don't, it, don't be so harsh. Uh-uh. No, no, no. God's being harsh towards flesh, my friends. His mercy is towards his sons. But he has no mercy for flesh. He has no mercy for the enemy of his life and yours with him. And when that cutting work of the cross comes towards it, those of us who have been delivered cannot grab his hand and try to keep back the sword of the Spirit of the living God, which is the Word of God and the cross of Jesus. Do you understand Jesus is a mighty weapon to deliver his own church? He is the Word that the, that the Spirit of God wields. And his finished work on the cross is the power that the Holy Ghost is about to release. And I'm telling you, the Son knows how to set his sons free. He knows how to deliver us. And he is coming for us. And then guess what? There will be many that will be in this vanguard. There will be many who will be now in these elite troops. All right? <laughs> Forgive my laughter, because when I talk about being elite, you understand this is a special club, my friends. When the Father deals with His sons as sons, and oh my, when they get up, when they get up and begin to wield the sword, it is going to be with great grace towards the sons, but no mercy towards the self and towards the things that ride in on self. You can read this in Isaiah 27 in the message. It says that God is about to unsheath his mighty, merciless, massive sword against Leviathan. Leviathan, I don't like to get into too, these things too much because people get too off on things that are not really the focus. But God's going to unsheath and punish. He's going to unsheath the cross, his mighty, massive, merciless sword towards Leviathan. The cross is the only thing that can deliver those who find themselves in the belly of pride. Mm. Leviathan is just, he's the king of the sons of pride. Let's don't get too focused on that. He can't do anything unless we are in unfettered independence from God. So you understand that the world may look like she's in a traumatized state, my friends, but the church has been living in her well-adjusted, traumatized state. She has adjusted so well to her goodness, so well to her independence from God, she barely even knows that he's left the building. He is moving. God is moving, and we must move with him. So, I want you to be encouraged today. When you look to your left and to your right, and when you begin to see the redemptive exposure of God, who says we've got to address things as they really are. I hope that you are seeing redemptive exposure coming to you and that you will let God do what he and he alone can do. And I hope then that you will connect with those who have formerly been dealt with. And I don't mean like just yesterday. All right. Do you understand? Do you un I'm pointing my finger. I'm sorry. It's a redemptive finger pointing. Okay. So... <laughs> All right, so so y'all can see that I'm not in my kitchen today doing Move on Mondays. I'm in a hotel on my way to Louisiana to see my mom. 
All right, you talk about redemption, Lord Jesus. And so I want you to understand that God is coming because he loves his church. He loves the world, but he is about to send sons who are flaming, flaming with fires of intimacy, abiding, of the cross. They are, gonna, they are the message that they bring. No longer are we going to teach principles. Teach, here's my seven-step list. All right? No, no, no. I am the message. Okay? If I could say it this, I am Nancy McCready, and I am this message. All right? It's not just I approve of this message. I am this message. I needed this message. And he came for me. And his goodness surrounds me like a crown. Oh, and he is about to surround you with his goodness. Psalm 65, 11, You are crowned and surrounded by his goodness. There's, we're, we, he is about to deal with our controversies with him as though somehow he has been unfaithful. Oh, self, you're going down. Flesh, you are going down. And no longer will you have an Adamic cry coming out of the church of Jesus Christ where you say, well, it was this woman that you gave me. No longer will there be left dormant under the veneers of goodness within the church. Suspicions about God's faithfulness. Read Jeremiah 15, 19. If he had to deal with Jeremiah, he's going to have to deal with us. If he had to deal with Peter, he's going to have to deal with us. My friends, we come... <laughs> from a long line of sons that had to be dealt with deeply. And God is coming for us. And this Adamic cry is not going to remain in his church, unaddressed, unjudged, uncrucified. God is about to boom, pull it out into the open. I hope he only has to pull it out in the open to you and maybe one trusted mentor. But if you require him to have to expose it on a grander scale, then my friends, he will. Because if you have refused those whom he has sent to you, then you have required him to go large on you in his love and in his redemption. But there is about to be a messianic cry. There is about to be a Jesus cry coming from the sons that says, Father, <laughs> the Holy Spirit has been poured out and conferred sonship upon you that you might cry out, Abba, Father, Father, you are good. And all of your ways are perfect. And I'm looking forward to the day that we will say his ways are my ways. His thoughts are my thoughts. There cannot continue to be a chasm so big between the Father and the sons that we have no clue of his thoughts. Now, I understand that we are born separated from him, but my friends, we have now been brought nigh. We have been brought into oneness with him. Are you more and more adapting to his ways, learning his ways personally, that his thoughts are your thoughts. You do think like your father. You do as your father does. This is going to be the cry of sons. Not still the old Adamic cry of, God, why did you let this happen to me? My friends, let me just say this to you. Since I am obviously mm, having a little bit of a different <laughs> experience this morning here on Move On Mondays. Let me tell you what. The greatest tragedy in life is not that I was sexually abused when I was a child, although that was tragic. Let me tell you, I believe this with all of my heart, that the old man is the greatest tragedy that ever happened. Because where did all the other tragedies come from? Where did all the other um, abuses, where did everything else come Out of the heart of the old man. That is not the creation of God. That is the creation of Satan, Adam, and Eve. And that is the creation that God, in his goodness, crucified on the cross. That there might be his creation coming up, coming up in resurrection out of the loins of Jesus Christ. Mm. My friends, I think I 
was the greatest tragedy that ever happened. And I've seen how God has mercifully dealt with me, the old man, and made me a new man and made me a son, a former enemy of God's by nature. See, sometimes we think we were just, you know, I was just a poor victim of things and then God helped me. You know, I've got my book coming out in 2021 called From Trauma to Trust. And let me tell you, it's not the story of a poor girl that was abused. It is the story, my friends, that we are born in a traumatized state, separated from love and life himself, left to ourselves and what others can give to us. And we live trying to well adjust, well adjust to a traumatized state that we were never meant to live in. And it is time now by the cross of Jesus Christ to be catapulted from trauma living under our own care, trusting ourselves and others, we need to now be catapulted into trusting Him. And I tell it on the back of my own narrative, on the back of my own story. And I just want to say to you that God Himself, my friends, is coming. And I mean, really, this is like an understatement. <laughs> this is like an understatement. God is about to be able to move through sons as the God that he is. If you've ever listened to me, you know that I'm having signs made with these A.W. Tozer quotes. To, I'm going to put them over my washer and dryer in the most mundane, ordinary drudgery room of the house in the laundry room where you do the mundane activities. And these quotes say, every man must choose his world. My friends, choose the world of your father, the kingdom of your father. The other one says that God has something that he desires. And God desires to have sons who are like theaters where he can put on full display his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus and that he can move freely about unhindered and that he can be the God and act like the God that he is. Oh, there are about to be open displays of his goodness. I'm going to tell on myself so that I can display his goodness. Hmm? Listen to me carefully. There have to be sons who so know him and love him because of how he has dealt with them that they say, God, be who you are through me. Now act like the God that you are. Do it your way. <laughs> oh, it's about to happen. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about this. <laughs> Woo. Well, not really, but it's such a distraction, you know, and, and then my eye starts to burn because of my mascara. All right, here we go, my friends. Here we go. This is what Nancy McCready Ministries is about. This is about what the Producers Way online school and community is about to be about. This is what the schools of discipleship, internship, and restoration are about to be. Um, you know, I'm telling you, shift into what God is doing. Don't be afraid, my friends, of redemptive exposure. It's not what causes the trouble. The trouble has already been happening. God is coming for you. And his redemptive exposure is going to set us so free from ourselves and to him that the world is about to see what Jesus prayed for in John 17. Father, let them be one with us as I am one with you so that the world will be convinced that I am the one that you have sent. My friends, the way we live in oneness with Him, with full exposure, we stop pretending, we stop trying to produce some kind of, you know, we're so relevant and so cool. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, we're not. We are like Him, all right? I, I mean, y'all understand what I'm saying. I, I want to be relevant. I mean, I want to, you know, but... But do you understand what I'm saying? Can anybody help me out there today? Okay, don't make me work you. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, so, so anyway, what I'm saying to you is that, listen, it's going to be as God has desired. Are you one of those sons? You see, we're not trying to return to the first days of our first love with God. My friends, we're being returned to God, who is our first love our only love, our only hope of love. And he doesn't love according to your human um, love. He, he just doesn't love like that. Human love is just, it's just, 
not what it's going to be. It's his kind of love. And he produces sons of light. He produces, he knows how to produce his sons. And this is the tent of his presence that I'm pitching everywhere I go. Actually, it's already pitched, you know what I'm saying, by God's design. But when I'm discovering these men and women who have this heart for God, this is what they're called to because God put it in them. And when they hear this message, they say, that's, that's what we're needing. Is there really a way and a process for this? Well, yes, there is. It's quite organic and it's quite possible. But it takes time. Because when God does something of him, it takes time. But I do sense, I must say to you that I do sense, sorry, it's only because it's burning. It's not vanity. It's pain that's causing me to do that. All right. It's, it's not... Uh, um, it's, it's not going to take forever in this time because there is an acceleration. But what I'm learning from him as I talk to him about it is that it's about to go swift and deep because of redemptive exposure. No more convincing. And listen to me carefully. If somebody else has to keep convincing I'm sorry, if somebody else has to keep confessing your sin and then you just agree with what they've found out, my friends, that's, that's not what we're talking about. It may start out that way, but God is about to bring you to a deep grief that only he could bring you to, that you'll never want to escape from. And then you will finally let him direct your pain. The pain of awakening to what has really been going on and what you really are apart from him. It's also what will lead you to finally embrace who you actually are with him. Hmm? Mm. This is good because God is so good. He is so, so good. Whoo, the goodness of God is about to crown you. Psalm 65, 11. And his goodness is going to increase our greatness, Psalm 71, 21. What is our greatness, my friends? That word greatness means our sound. The sound of sons is about to come forth. Ooh, and we're going to talk about him. We're going to declare him. He is about to increase our number. He's about to increase our density. We are not going to be thin-skinned Christians. The thickness of God is about to, to come to us. He's about to increase our influence, our magnitude. You understand the magnitude is what happens when an earthquake comes and it registers on the Richter scale. And there are different levels of impact and magnitude. Oh, his goodness is about to increase our greatness. Psalm 65, 11, Psalm 71, 21. So, Good Monday morning to you. So glad we were together today. I pray that this has encouraged you. Don't let it frighten you. Hmm? Sometimes we, we get afraid of the wrong things, my friends. We fear exposure. Hmm. We fear God pointing things out to us. And it might be because we think we're left to ourselves. We think that uh, we have to fix it all. We don't. You see, this is the redefining of discipleship. And for many of you watching now and later, if you've come under this tent of his presence, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm putting out the call to all of those. Get ready, my friends, to be a part of that vanguard that will help others come to him. Are you remaining in the way? Are you staying with him? Are you continuing to let him mature you in his love are you getting ready to pass on this mighty work hmm? schools of discipleship schools of internship schools of restoration god is about to get us ready because his church mm, i love the church mm, his church is about to know him as the all-consuming fire. He is jealous for his people, 
Oh, how he loves you. So, let's get ready. What do you say? Hmm? Don't just be focused on a new year. This is a new era. God is moving in ways we have never known. Every one of us is a pioneer right now. If you're a pastor, you're a pioneer pastor. <laughs> because if we're honest with ourselves, we sense him and his movings. But we're all going places with him. We've never been before. But we must also turn and strengthen the brethren. This is what Jesus told Peter. After you get finished getting sifted, turn and strengthen the brethren. We owe nothing except a debt of love, my friends. And I am going to pay my debt. <laughs> wow. Wow. You see, you can't pay God. God's not looking for you to pay Him, my friends. He restored you. <laughs> but He is looking for us to turn and pay it forward. Pass it on. Come on, let's get with him and let's let him do it. In us and through us. Mm. This redemptive exposure is going to be difficult in the beginning days. But it is going to be so good. This is the fruit that the world will eat off of the tree of life that is inside of us. I pray that you'll share this with people today. Be encouraged. God is moving, and he's moving inside of us, and he's getting us ready. So there were many things that I shared today, and I pray whichever one speaks to you that you'll grab it and you'll take hold of it, that you'll pass this message on. Get people over to my YouTube channel. Get them to the podcast. Get them here. All of these Move On Mondays are on my YouTube channel, just Nancy McCready on YouTube. I want you to help me get this message out. I want, it, it's not about just me, but you see you have to get the messenger out to get the message out. The same is true for you. I wanna help get you out there. That's what Nancy McCready Ministries is about, is reproducing. A producer of producers. I am so, I'm sorry, I'm, I should have stopped. I should have stopped, okay? But here's what, I want you to hear this. Hmm? In, in this coming time, I'm not going to limit it to 2021. In this coming time, my focus is on the producers. Is upon those who I know that God has gotten ready. In private, they're a nameless, faceless company of jealous sons. But they are about to emerge. There are those that I haven't even yet connected with, and God is connecting us now and soon. But my focus is producing sons for the Father. And no devil in hell will be able to stop them because they put a stop to what the devil was doing to them in private. And they have come to see now what God is up to. No more confused, clueless, compromised, conflicted sons. The cross is about to produce sons. Discipleship is sonship. He's going to flood his house with it. Oh, my. Mm. So you can see why. Though I am deeply, deeply aware of what's going to happen, of what it's going to take, I am deeply, deeply rejoicing with the Father because I know His ways are perfect. <laughs> and all of His ways will deal bountifully with us. Okay? So, I love you all. I'll be over on Instagram at 9 o'clock live. I don't know if it's going to sound like this or not. When you do them live, you don't always know exactly what's going to happen. But anyway, I love you all. And I truly, truly appreciate you. All right? So share this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.